Hello and a very good evening. You're watching the news tonight on Rajya Sabha Television with me, Frank Pereira. Here are the headlines right now. Setback to Prakash Singh Badal-led Punjab government, Supreme Court quashes legislation involving water issue with Haryana. Punjab government says it will not release water. Finance Minister Arun Jaitley allays fears on demonetization as people throng banks and post offices to deposit defunct 500 and 1000 rupee notes. RBI all set to reintroduce 1000 rupee notes in a few months. Prime Minister Narendra Modi leaves on a three day visit to Japan annual summit meeting with Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe to witness signing of civil nuclear deal discussions on trade cooperation. And demonstrations erupt in United States against Donald Trump's presidential election when crowds criticize his controversial campaign rhetoric on immigrants. Well, the Supreme Court's ruling favoring Haryana on the contentious SYL canal issue has set political temperatures soaring in Punjab. Chief Minister Prakash Singh Badal has asserted that not a drop of water would be allowed to be taken out of the state. The state will also appeal to the president not to accept the advice of the apex court sade vaste pehla jo hai pani hai pani to bina mere khayal hai je punjab da pani na hove te desh vi bhukha mar jaye aur sari industry kisani punjab di economy sab pani te munasir is karke whatever be the reason assi kise halat punjab da pani bahar nahi Earlier, the Supreme Court held as unconstitutional the 2004 law passed by the state government to terminate the Sutlej Yamuna Link Canal water sharing agreement with neighboring states, and that Punjab could not have taken a unilateral decision to terminate the water sharing agreement with Haryana, Himachal Pradesh, Rajasthan, Jammu and Kashmir, Delhi, and Chandigarh. Thursday's judgment implies that the 2004 Act was not in connaissance with the Apex Court judgment of 2003, which had mandated the construction of the SYL canal that has been stalled. This Supreme Court will go to the Supreme Court. And the Supreme Court will be able to take the Supreme Court. And the Supreme Court will be able to take the Supreme Court. And the Supreme Court एसवाईएल के पानी के बटवारे का हुआ हुआ है वो लागू होगा उसमें कहीं कोई अब गुंजाइश नहीं अभी सिर्फ इतना बताया है कि जितने के जो पंजाब सरकार का फैसला था यूनिलेटरल ब्रेक करने का जो एग्रीमेंट था हरियाणा पंजाब के बीच में वो गलत फैसला था पंजाब सरकार का अभी एक लाइन का जजमेंट ऐसा ही बोला, बोला है इसका जो इफेक्ट है वो ये है कि नहर का पानी हरियाणा के वासियों को मिलेगा Soon after the verdict, Punjab Congress President Amarinder Singh resigned from his Lok Sabha seat while his party MLAs resigned en masse from the State Assembly to protect the decision. Now the party MLAs sent their resignations to the Speaker of the Punjab Assembly. Punjab goes to polls early next year. I am very disappointed, I am very unhappy, I am very sad for Punjab that this decision has taken this place. You mustn't forget that this was the issue that brought about trouble in Punjab. 30 years ago and we don't want that scenario to take place that's one we want a law and order to be maintained that's the first thing second issue is that we would like uh, to protect the rights of our farmers and because the whole of southern punjab will go dry with, if this happens is is sare issue mein punjab sarkar aur central sarkar buri tarah se punjab punjab ka paksh rakhne mein buri tarah fail ho gayi hai nahi punjab sarkar ne paksh rakha punjab ka सही माने में अदालत के सामने जिस कारण फैसला अगेंस्ट आया और जो सेंट्रल गवर्नमेंट का केंद्र सरकार का जो वहाँ पे एडवोकेट जनरल था उन्होंने भी पंजाब के अगेंस्ट ही वहाँ पे सब कुछ बोला तो हम उनके रोष स्वरूप पंजाब विधानसभा से सारे विधायक इस्तीफा दे रहे हैं Moving on to the other big news that we're tracking here right now, Finance Minister Arun Jaitley on Thursday sought to allay concerns of the nation after the government's decision to demonetize high denomination currency. Jaitley stressed that decisiveness is the hallmark of the current government. As people queued up to deposit and exchange their 500 and 1000 rupee notes, Finance Minister Arun Jaitley once again assured the country that depositors will not be harassed over small deposits. 
Speaking at the Economic Editors Conference, Jaitley said that the country might face problems initially, but in the medium and the long run, they will definitely benefit. So people who have uh, small amounts of cash, there has been an Indian tradition to keep uh, some cash always at home uh, for exigencies uh, and emergencies which is required. They can exchange that, they can deposit that into their accounts. And the revenue departments are not going to take notice of these small uh, depositors. The government is also all set to reintroduce the 1,000 rupee banknotes in a few months and also issue a new series of lower denomination bills with enhanced security features. To crack down on black money holders, deposits above 2.5 lakh will be taxed and could draw a 200% penalty if found disproportionately higher than the account owner's income. The 1,000 rupee notes will also be brought into the market with a completely new design and new, uh, new dimension, new design, new color uh, combination, which will look distinctly different from the old one. The finance minister also said that the centre is making all efforts to build consensus on sticky issues, especially on jurisdiction of assessees, to ensure the GST rollout from April 1, 2017. Truti Mishra, Radha TV. Well, the demonetization decision by the government on Tuesday has attracted more criticism from the opposition parties. The opposition today highlighted problems faced by the common man in depositing and exchanging old currency notes in the banks. On the first day that the banks opened after the demonetization decision, opposition parties once again criticized the government for heaping trouble on the common man. कि जी जो इनके अपने लोग थे जो इनके अपने दोस्त थे जिनके पास सबसे ज्यादा काला धन है इस देश के अंदर वो इनको इन्होंने पहले से ही बता दिया था हफ्ता भर पहले अरे काला पैसा तो शुरू हो गया दलाली शुरू हो गई ऑलरेडी बाजार के अंदर हजार हजार रुपए 800 800 रुपए में बिक रहे हैं 500 Political parties from election-bound Uttar Pradesh also joined the chorus. While BSP called it an undeclared economic emergency, the Samajwadi party sought the suspension of the move for a week to help the common people. Now they have remembered their own money. They have been in a few years. That is, as the government was made, then they have been in this country, why did they not go to their own money? Why did they not go to their own money? यानी कि इन्होंने देश में काले धन की तरफ विदेशों से काला धन वापस नहीं आया। आपको केवल चुनाव दिखाई दे रहा है भारतीय जनता पार्टी। केवल भारतीय जनता पार्टी का चुनाव देख रही है, देश को नहीं देख रहे। जबकि सबसे पहले आम जनता, गरीब जनता को दिखाना चाहिए, महिलाओं को दिखाना चाहिए। with the banks opening for the first time after the government's decision to demonetize 500 and 1,000 rupee notes, long queues were seen outside all banks and post offices with people trying to deposit and exchange their old currency notes. Vishal Daya's report for Rajya Sabha Television. Well, with new denominations available in the banks and post offices across India, huge queues of people to exchange 500 and 1,000 rupee notes were seen on Thursday. In order to service the rush, banks will remain open for public transactions on Saturday and on Sunday. Long queues were seen at banks across the country on Thursday morning as people rushed to deposit or exchange the 500 and 1,000 rupee notes in their possession. I had especially taken it because I wanted to feel how your new notes are. It's quite a commendable job. As you can see, they have mentioned that you have to pay for 2-2,000 rupees. The note is a bit small in comparison to 1,000 rupees. I took the new note, this is a 2,000 note. The new note is very good to see. The new note is more than to understand that the new note is more than to understand. I got a 100 note in my pocket. 
The evening after the Prime Minister's announcement, panic set in among citizens. In order to manage the expected rush, 3,400 additional security personnel were deployed at various banks across the national capital alone. Bank authorities said they were prepared to deal with the crowd surge and urged them not to panic. उन 25 काउंटर अभी आज चालू किए हैं और एक्सचेंज ऑफ नोट्स की पूरी तैयारी आरो अंदर से चल रही है लोगों को बताया भी जा रहा है कि आप धैर्य रखें धैर्य पूर्वक आए क्योंकि यह कार्य जो है 30 दिसंबर तक चलनी है और रोज चलेगी लेट आवर्स तक चलेगी 8 बजे रात तक चलेगी इसलिए घबराने की जरूरत नहीं Apart from banks, post offices also witnessed long serpentine queues at their counters, but the staff were less prepared due to which people had to wait for longer hours. However, not all banks or post offices had enough new denominations. Many returned home either with hundreds or with new 2,000 rupee notes as the new 500 rupee denomination was not available. We are in the effort that there is no problem for the people. And when we look at the people, we are कुछ भी हम कर सकेंगे वो सब हम करने के प्रयास कर रहे हैं जो मोदी जी ने जो किया वो अच्छा किया लेकिन इसमें जो क्या बोलते हैं इसको अरेंजमेंट अरेंजमेंट उसमें गड़बड़ी से नए हमें ऐसा लग रहा है कि सौ के और पाँच सौ के नोट जो है वो कहीं ब्लॉक हो रहे हैं The finance minister and RBI governor reiterated that there was no need to panic or create chaos. Banks have been asked to work through the coming weekend and also remain open for longer hours. With inputs from Anu Divan and Navikram Singh, Bureau Report for Rajya Sabha TV. Moving on to some other news now, the Union Government will convene an all-party meeting on November 15th on the eve of the commencement of the Winter Session of Parliament. Now, the meeting is likely to be attended by Prime Minister Narendra Modi and Home Minister Rajnath Singh, along with representatives of various political parties. The Winter Session, which normally convenes from the third or the fourth week of November, has been advanced to November 16th this time for early passage of the central GST and integrated GST legislations which will pave way for the goods and services tax. The issues of army surgical strikes and allegations by some parties that the government was trying to politicize it and uh, the step to demonetize 500 and 1000 rupee notes are said to be in the limelight during the session. The government is also considering advancing the budget session by a month or so starting from January next year. The government would also push for passage of the ordinance which seeks to amend the Enemy Property Act. In December, the centre had for the fourth time promulgated the ordinance by to amend the nearly 50-year-old Enemy Property Law to guard against claims of succession or transfer of properties left by people who migrated to Pakistan after wars. Al Samajwadi Party Chief Mulayam Singh Yadav put an end to speculation about a grand alliance in the upcoming UP Assembly election, saying there will be no alliance with any party but there may be only mergers. Mulayam's announcement comes only days after he had met the Congress's chief strategist in UP Prashant Kishore over several hours, triggering speculation about an alliance. The presence of RJD Chief Lalu Yadav, Janta Dal United Sharad Yadav, and other leaders at the Samajwadi Party's Silver Jubilee had also hinted at a possible alliance. UP Chief Minister Akhilesh Yadav also showed his disinterest in an alliance on Wednesday, saying that the Samajwadi party can win the election on its own. समाजवादी पार्टी का कोई गठबंधन नहीं होगा कोई मर्जा करना चाहेगा तो मर्जा करेंगे और कुछ लोगों ने मर्जा कर भी लिया well, moving on, now the Delhi High Court has slammed Delhi government for the prevailing pollution in the city and ranked it as the worst in the country in terms of air pollution. It added that the air pollution situation was grave, leading to at least one million deaths. The National Green Tribunal too lashed out at Delhi government for not installing air filters in government schools during the recent thick smog. Well, the NGT also directed the Interstate Central Monitoring Committee and state committees to enforce their orders on vehicular pollution, dust pollution, solid waste and crop burning. The NGT once again wrapped Delhi and neighbouring states of Punjab, Haryana, Rajasthan and Uttar Pradesh for burning crops. 
Well, the Green Panel also refused to pass any direction on giving free masks to the school-going children and senior citizens as it observed that a mask cannot protect when the pollution level is 20 times higher than the prescribed limits. Well, let's now get to a roundup of the other national news in Nationwide. A militant was killed on Thursday as army foiled an infiltration bid near the line of control in Kashmir's Baramula district. An attempt by militants to infiltrate the Rampur sector was also thwarted by the alert troops, leading to a fire exchange. The operation is still reportedly in progress. Former Rajya Sabha MP Vijay Darda, ex-Coal Secretary H.C. Gupta and five others were put on trial on Thursday in a coal scam case relating to alleged irregularities in the allocation of a coal block in Chhattisgarh. They were charged with criminal conspiracy and cheating. They were granted bail in August last year after they appeared before the court following summons. The next hearing will be on the 16th of December. Telangana Congress unit on Thursday held a protest outside the state administrative headquarters against the TRS government's move to construct a new secretariat by demolishing the existing buildings. Several Congress MLAs and other leaders led by the state Congress chief N. Uttam Kumar Reddy took part in the protest. They alleged that the move to build a new secretariat in the name of Vastu defects was a waste of public money. Former Karnataka Chief Minister B.S. Yadurappa on Thursday quoted arrest during a protest against Tipu Sultan Jayanti celebrations. 48 BJP protesters were arrested in Madikeri. Protests were also staged outside the town hall in Bengaluru. Private buses and autos were off the roads and shops remained shut in Kodogo district after a band call by the Hindu Jagran Vedike and other organizations. Well, it's time for a short break now, but news updates will continue on the other side. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Many times in our villages, we don't have a energy or electricity. Okay. So that electricity can be supplied through this solar power mm -hmm. or solar power tree. Other than this, we have also a goal to go ahead with the zero waste management. When I say zero waste management means whatever you produce, mm -hmm. somebody else is using that. Okay. It, nothing is a waste. Mm -hmm. Watch Eureka with Dr. Hari Shirani, Director CSIR CMERI Durgapur on Rajya Sabha Television. Welcome back. You're watching Rajya Sabha Television. Our Prime Minister Narendra Modi is in Japan on a three day visit to hold annual summit level talks with his Japanese counterpart Shinzo Abe. During the visit, the two countries are expected to sign a civil nuclear deal besides discussing ways to set up uh, cooperation in areas like trade, investment and security. An agreement on the purchase of high-tech Japanese US-2 Shinmaiwa amphibious aircrafts is also likely to be reached. The South China Sea is also likely to figure in the talks. Prime Minister Modi is also scheduled to meet the Japanese emperor in Tokyo. From Tokyo, Modi will travel to Kobe by the famed uh, Shinkansen bullet train the technology that will be deployed for the Mumbai Ahmedabad High Speed Railway. Upon his arrival in Japan, Modi said he is hopeful of fruitful deliberations that will boost India-Japan ties. Earlier on route to Japan, Modi made a surprise stopover in Bangkok to pay respects to King Bhumibol Adulyadej, who died last month. In his condolence, condolence message, the Prime Minister described the late king as a statesman saying his departure from uh, this world is a loss for the international community. Moving on, now India today recalled two more diplomats from its High Commission in Islamabad. The two officials were among the eight Indian High Commission officials named by Pakistan last week. Accusing them of spying, the Pak Foreign Office had released their names, photographs and other personal details in the media, posing a direct threat to their security in the country. Three officials had been recalled on Wednesday. With this, the total number of diplomats recalled to New Delhi has reached five. Well, Donald Trump's unexpected election win ignited protests across the United States with thousands of demonstrators crowding into streets and surrounding his buildings in major American cities. 
tens of thousands of Americans in at least 25 U.S. cities, including New York, Philadelphia, Chicago, Oakland, San Francisco and Seattle, shouted anti-Trump slogans, started fires and held candlelight vigils to mourn the result. Here's a report. Demonstrators marched in cities across the United States to protest against Republican Donald Trump's surprise presidential election win. The crowds blasted his controversial campaign rhetoric about immigrants, Muslims and other groups. He is a racist, he is a sexist, he is a neo-Nazi and he does not deserve to run our country. In New York, thousands of protesters filled streets in midtown Manhattan as they made their way to Trump Tower. Hundreds of others gathered at a Manhattan park and shouted, not my president. Not my president! Even though we can't really change anything and we have to accept what has happened, we want them to know that we're pissed. Like, it's, this is awful. And even though we can't change anything, it feels good to stand together with my brothers, my sisters, with people that share my beliefs and let everyone know that we are not okay with this. A demonstration of about 6,000 people blocked traffic in Oakland, California. Protesters threw objects at police in riot gear, burned trash in the middle of an intersection, set off fireworks and smashed door front windows. In downtown Chicago, an estimated 1,800 people gathered outside the Trump International Hotel and Tower, chanting phrases like, no Trump, no KKK, no racist USA. He's the epitome of a system that's broken down into virtual reality where we're going on these false notions and premises and nobody knows what's real or why anymore and it's, a, it's the painful underbelly that we need to wash away. In Seattle, police responded to a shooting okay. with multiple victims near the scene of an anti-Trump protest. Police said it was unrelated to the demonstrations. Hundreds also gathered in Philadelphia, Boston and Portland, Oregon. Protests were also held in California where a Trump effigy was burnt on the West Coast. As anti-Trump protesters aired their grievances with the election, supporters also came out in some places to express their enthusiasm for the president-elect. Bureau Report, Rajya Sabha Television. Meanwhile, hours after Donald Trump won the US presidential election, the UN atomic watchdog on Wednesday said Iran has exceeded a soft limit on sensitive material set under its nuclear deal with major powers. The watchdog said it is the second time Tehran has surpassed the 130 metric ton threshold for heavy water, a material used as a moderator in reactors like Iran's unfinished one at Iraq since the deal was put in place in January. It had 130.1 tons of the material on Tuesday. The last time Iran overstepped that mark was a brief passing without a major criticism from the other countries that signed the nuclear deal last year. But there are questions about whether the incoming Trump administration will react to such incidents the same way. The IAEA is policing the restrictions placed on Iran's uh, nuclear activities under the deal it signed with the US, Russia, China, Britain, France and Germany. The agreement also lifted international sanctions against Tehran. The United States has also confirmed Iran's intention to export the excess heavy water. The IAEA has observed that Iran has slightly exceeded its 130 metric ton heavy water stockpile uh, limit under the JCPOA by 100 kilograms. So that's about one tenth of a metric ton. A um, couple of points to make on that. It's important to note that Iran made no effort to uh, hide this, uh, hide what it was doing from uh, the IAEA. Uh, during the course of its ongoing heavy water production, Iran uh, produced a little more heavy water than permitted, uh, but uh, is now taking steps to address the issue. Well, let's now get you a roundup of the other international news in Global Buzz. At least seven people were killed and dozens more injured after a tram overturned in London. People were trapped inside and more than 50 were taken to hospital after the derailment in Croydon. The tram driver has been released after being detained on suspicion of manslaughter. British Transport Police said that they were investigating whether he fell asleep. China today launched a navigation satellite which will conduct in-orbit experiments using pulsar detectors to demonstrate new technologies. The X-ray pulsar navigation satellite weighing more than 200 kilograms was launched from the Jiquan Satellite Launch Center. 
It was carried by a Long March 11 rocket, the 239th flight mission by a Long March carrier rocket series. While in orbit, the satellite will undergo tests on its detector functions and space environment adaptability. Unidentified attackers on a motorcycle threw an explosive device at the French embassy in central Athens on Thursday, wounding one guard. According to officials, the device was most likely a hand grenade. There has been no claim of responsibility for the attack. Going on to some sports news now. India was 63 for no loss at Stumps on day two of the first cricket test of the five-match series against England at Rajkot with openers Murli Vijay on 25 and Gautam Gambhir on 28 at the crease. Earlier today, England were all out for 537 runs in their first innings. The visitors had resumed the day's play at 311 for four. England's innings was uh, steadied by Centurions Muin Ali and Ben Stokes. For India, Ravindra Jadeja took three wickets while Mohammad Shami, Umesh Yadav and R. Ashwin bagged two wickets each. The series will be followed by three ODIs and three T20 matches. Well, let's now get to your roundup of the other sports news in Sports Beat. Indian golfer Raditya Shok will lead the Indian Challenge in the Women's Indian Open Tournament at Gurugram. After a consecutive top 10 and top 15 finish as an amateur, Aditi will tee off alongside the biggest names in the game, including defending champion Emily Pedersen, Brittany, Linky Comb, Beth Allen, Isabel, Bonu, and Anne Van Dam, among others. The event will see 114 top professionals from around the globe fighting for the top spot. Pakistan men's junior hockey team will be playing practice matches against Germany and Canada in Lucknow to prepare for the Junior Hockey World Cup which starts in December. The team had been practicing in India after the Indian government's permission following the bilateral political problems. Pakistan is also planning to hold two home international friendlies before the World Cup starts. Sri Lanka defeated Zimbabwe by 257 runs in the second test match at Harare to seal a 2-0 whitewash. Leading Sri Lanka for the first time, Rangana Herat took 19 wickets in the series, while opener Dimut Kunaratne was named man of the series for scoring 280 runs in the two matches. This was Sri Lanka's fifth successive test win. Real Madrid and Portugal forward Cristiano Ronaldo has signed a lifetime deal with sportswear giant Nike, which will reportedly fetch him over $1 billion. With this deal, Ronaldo has become the third athlete to sign a lifetime endorsement deal with Nike after NBA players Michael Jordan and LeBron James. Well, that's it on this edition of the news tonight. Good night.